going down. I'm tired of myself. I'm tired of this town. Eminent Waste of Time presented by CW Motorsports episode 116. I'm Doug. And I'm Chad. And we actually scraped together enough stuff to put together an episode this week. <laughs> actually, a lot of stuff started happening in the UTV world. We, I've kind of mentioned it to some other people. There are just weeks, especially in the off season, where there's just nothing going on. It's true, and honestly, in the past, we've been able to fill that in with, you know, what kind of gauges do you need in your UTV? What kind of tire pressure should you be running? But there's a point at which you're just rehashing information you've already done, and that's not really interesting to people. So we took a little unscheduled holiday break. How about that? Yeah. There's only a couple weeks there where we didn't upload a regular podcast, and for all those three people that are actually paying attention to it. We have 275 subscribers on YouTube now, and we've passed 1,500 on Facebook. Yeah. So. There are people that enjoy punishment. There's actually enough people now that we can't say it's strictly like our moms listening. (laughs) (laughs) True story. Well, anyways, this is our first New Year's episode, so Happy New Year's, everyone. This is the first one of 2020. Happy New Year's. I don't. Doug, do you have any New Year's resolutions? Uh, yeah, I'm going to make a resolution to come up with a resolution for 2021. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I actually do have a few, but there are more things I've already been thinking about, and so I'm just going to do the things, you know. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to blame it on New Year's. I'm just going to say it's it's just time, and, you know, they were on the list, and so New Year's does kind of have a way of making you, you reevaluate things, and and take a look but they're ones I'll actually stick with because they need to happen it's not like oh I'm going to go to the gym and look like Arnold Schwarzenegger I mean that's not going to happen no matter what (laughs) right so these are things that will happen because they need to yep I did hear one really funny 2020 New Year's comment though okay Um, so Ryan Seacrest has taken over the New Year's Eve bash thing that Dick Clark used to do yeah and so they said, for this year, Ryan Seacrest needs to step down and Barbara Walters needs to do it. So at midnight, she can say, I'm Barbara Walters, and this is 2020. <laughs> yeah, I heard that. That was a good one. Yeah. I was like, okay, clever. I will give you that. Yep. I don't really have a New Year's resolution. I'm just working on my garage a lot trying to get that done. You're not the... Uh... I want to say you're not really a resolution type of person because you just get things done anyways. I mean, you're, yeah. you're not the procrastinate or not do things that need to get done type of person. I mean, I'm generally not either. I just, mine was more like mental notes of, okay, let's be better at this, do this thing and get this knocked out, but nothing major. But you, you're kind of in the same vein or even more so where if it needs to happen, you just do it. <laughs> if I'm thinking about it and thinking, I need to make a resolution, I've already done it. Exactly. Which is yeah. really kind of where you want to be. That's why most New Year's resolutions fail anyways, is because they're made by people who have no intention of keeping them. It sounds yeah. good in their head, but if they haven't already done the major thing they need to do, they're never going to. Right. So I guess I've kind of been giving updates on my garage, so I guess we'll do an update here. Um, I got... It's a secured building now, and it's weatherproof. So it is roof, doors, windows are in... Uh, and all the wire is pulled, and I started putting outlets in the ceiling where the lights are going, and next is insulation. You're making hay. Yeah. Um, trying to get it to where it's a usable building. I guess the only electrical I really haven't done is the main service wire that they'll be underground. I have not done that yet. Yeah, but, I mean, that's not end of the world. You're basically going 100, and, 100 feet and change. Yeah, pretty much. So, that's not terrible. It'll get done. Right. Yeah, so I'll do that here sometime in the near future. But, yeah, I need to get insulation in it and stuff like that. And then it's becoming a usable building, a usable shop for me to use. Now, are you just going to bat the walls or are you doing the spray foam? you getting crazy with it? No, I'm just going to bat them. Yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> it's not a house. It's not, you know, you're not trying to go for platinum energy star rating here. No, no. <laughs> um and the cost is so much more to spray foam it. Yeah. I mean, if it was your normal house and you were heating it 
all the time and air conditioning all the time, okay, I can see where the spray foam insulation would pay off to do it. Or if you lived in REMC land like I did when I was down there. True, true. <laughs> the, for those yeah. of you that don't know, the electrical rates where I lived, even though I was only about 15 minutes from Chad's house, were literally double. Oh, yeah. So mine are half of what yours were, and it's not a building I'm going to heat and air condition all the time. Yeah. So I didn't see a particular need to do spray foam. So. In fact, if you crank it back to 55 degrees in the winter, for a lot of jobs you'll be doing out there, you won't mind if you're wearing a coat. I mean, you'll probably just keep it at that temp. It's not like you're going to heat it up to go out there and work for two hours and come back. Right. And 55 is good to have like a hoodie on and work or a sweatshirt of some variety, you know. Yeah. Especially if you're doing a bunch of welding or something that's creating heat. I mean, you're at that point, you're good to go. Yep. I did... Uh, so lucky me i got a mini split given to me really how'd you score that well my mother-in-law ordered something off the internet like a year ago i guess and they sent her a mini split she didn't order one but that's what they sent her okay so, so she calls this place she ordered it from and said okay i don't know what this is uh but you know i don't need it i don't know what this is i need what i ordered and they said, okay, it's not worth us hassling with you sending it back. You can just keep it. And she was like, well, okay, whatever. And she just put it in her garage, and they sent her what she actually ordered. Well, then she uh, sent me a text, was it, end of last week, and she said, uh, are you heating and air conditioning your garage? I said, well, I will, but I haven't done anything with it yet. That's kind of low on the priority list right now. I need to get a roof on it and get it enclosed in and stuff like that. And she says, well, I have this thing that, they sent me and explained it all. It's on the small side to heat and cool my whole building. Um, like, it's at its limit. If you look at what it will do, it's it. Sure. But it's free. Yeah. <laughs> so Free is my favorite price on that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I'm going to put that in there as soon as I get uh, insulation and a couple wall panels up because, you know what, it it's a lot nicer to work in there when there's heat and air conditioning. So Exactly. Well, yeah. and I mean, you can go gonzo. It's blowing insulation is really cheap. So when you're up in the attic, I mean, if you want to put, you know, 24 inches up there, you can. I mean, that's where most of your heat loss is anyway. So. I'm R30 in the ceilings Okay. already. So it should be pretty good. Yeah. I think I was R42 at my house just because our AMC was so expensive and the insulation was so cheap. I'm like, blow more in. Just keep putting more in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think at R30, it'll be pretty good for a garage. Yeah. I mean, and then I'll be R19 in the walls. Perfect. So it should be pretty nice. Well, the other thing, too, is you don't have a lot of windows i mean houses are somewhat inefficient because you have windows because you want to see out in a garage you just need a couple for natural light it's not like you've got yep. huge picture windows in there yep i put four smaller windows basically so i could if i'm in there and i hear somebody pulling the drive i can you know who to shoot pretty at. much wherever i am i can look out and see <laughs> yeah well you'll notice my background is different um, i'm finally in my office here at the house which means that even if Deacon has friends over and stuff, the barking dogs and other craziness, I won't be right in the middle of all of that. I'm kind of secluded off to one end of the house. And I have doors I can close. Hmm. Well, congratulations on getting in there. Thank you. It's actually really nice because I work from home, so working from the dining room table was getting kind of old. <laughs> yeah. It's nice to have your own normal office space where you can just walk in and get going instead of okay i gotta clear off you know the laundry or whatever exactly yeah it, it got really cumbersome at time we're telling people if they got home like look you need to be super quiet because i'm going to be on a conference call and i need you to take the long way around and come into the kitchen from the other side so you're not walking behind me because that just makes people think you know he's not really working he's just sitting at the Hanging dining room table kitchen. you know <laughs> yeah which is exactly what i was doing but i was desperately trying to not give that impression so yeah. So I guess uh, in other local Chad related news, the foreign exchange student has shown up. Did it come in a box? <laughs> did, you, did you get a, a six foot by two foot by one foot box that said open quickly, had air holes poked in it? 
No, but it was quite an ordeal. So the original host family who was supposed to have him were uh, from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Okay. Which is about two and a half hours for me, roughly, for those that don't know the area. And so his flight was scheduled to go into Fort Wayne. So a few days before we were asking him uh, via emails and uh, chat messages, uh, okay, what's your flight look like? When do you get in? And he said he's going to Fort Wayne. And we're like, whoa, 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 Fort Wayne's a long ways away, really. I mean, it's not close. Yeah. The Indianapolis airport is 30 minutes up the road from me, and it's a much, much bigger airport. And we're like, okay, we contacted the person who's in charge of the whole thing. Can we get his flight changed to not be forever away? And they're like, nope, it is what it is. I was going to say, this it's an international flight that was probably non-refundable and had been planned since the dawn of time. So Right. So what happened was the regional directory person for up there um, picked him up at the Fort Wayne airport, drove him down to the north side of Indianapolis, which is still an hour away from me, and we picked him up last night at 11 p.m. And So I, this is I a really, very recent thing. Oh, yeah, it's last night. It was Saturday night. This will come out Tuesday. Um, I, I was telling my kids, I was like, you know, I admire this foreign exchange student kid. He was on, like, three or four transfer flights to get to his final plane ride. Um, then he hops in the car with some lady he's never met, who's the regional director lady, who he's only contacted via email and stuff. And then she drives him like an hour and a half or so south, and we meet at a hotel, and he jumps in my car with me and my kids, who he's never met and only just recently you know, sent emails back and forth, and I drive him another hour south, you know, and he doesn't know where he's going or anything. Are you sure this isn't human trafficking? Because it really sounds uh, it like it. It could be. It sounds a lot <laughs> like it. So the even worse part about all this was his bag didn't make the trip with him to Fort Wayne from Chicago. Oh, crap. We're still waiting on his bag. How is he size-wise compared to Brennan? <laughs> Normal. <laughs> uh, he's, he's pretty small. Like, uh, he's not very big built and he's just not very uh tall either so they're not sharing clothes <laughs> no well i don't know maybe brennan might have some from when he was a toddler <laughs> <laughs> my son is very tall for those that haven't listened a whole lot and heard me talk about him brennan is 18 and he's i don't know six seven six six, six. my wife is yelling from the other room six six so it's good that six, she's six. there to fact check and correct you I know, because of that one inch really made a difference. <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, he's he's extraordinarily tall, and his clothes don't fit like normal people's. Yeah. So. <laughs> Good times. But I haven't really got to talk to him much yet. Um, you know, he was wiped out when he got here because he'd been awake for like 20-something hours. Oh, and, sure. You know, basically we drove in the car got here and within 15 minutes everybody was in bed yeah so i can see that it'll take him a few days to adjust to the time and everything yeah and he's not super outgoing either it doesn't seem at least maybe some of this is jet lag but um yeah you'll have a better feel for that tomorrow i think yeah and he goes to school for his first day tomorrow and all that fun stuff so there's a lot being thrown at the kid for a few days seriously i mean you think about you know we may be getting older but we still remember being that age that's a pretty big adventure to go on it's a huge adventure yeah i mean we did stupid stuff but it was all local <laughs> yeah well congratulations uh, on your human trafficking experiment i'll follow that with <laughs> bated breath yeah thank you <laughs> So on to some actual UTV related bits because I think that's why people listen to this show. Man, yeah, probably. I'm gonna move move some windows around here so I can see what I'm doing. So this one kind of intrigued me because I didn't know how much of a demand there would be for this in the UTV world. Now I know there's always demand for UTV upgrade parts, but I feel like most people don't even take full advantage of the factory parts, <laughs> let alone needing a really really stout upgrade. 
But nonetheless, uh, it looks like Factory Elite has come up with the first true big break kit for the Razor. And it looks seriously beefy. I mean, uh, what do we got here? Willwood Rotors. They're four piston Willwood brake calipers. Um, 4130 steel, uh, heat treated knuckles, 11 inch chrome alley rotors, uh, billet caliper mounts. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think it's neat whenever companies do things like this. Like they look outside of the box and say, what has never been done and what can we do? Yeah. Now, here's my opinion on this exact modification or this accessory that they've done i cannot see it needed at all the, like the, maybe a very very small racing market i have never in the entire time we've been involved with racing seen somebody come across the line with brakes on fire yelling that they boiled their brake fluid and the brakes are gone well i've seen them boil their brake fluid the can ams do it quite often well um, that's true it's not it's not totally unheard of but bigger brakes doesn't necessarily solve that. No, you've got to get a, have a way to get rid of the heat. I right. Mean, pure and simple. Right. Now, in theory, right. if you have bigger brakes, you're not pushing them as hard, so you're generating less friction for the same amount of brake force, if that makes any I sense. Don't, but I don't know if that necessarily translates, because it's a larger rotor, so there's more clamping force on the outside, so the outside is due to the leverage is getting just as much heat I would imagine yeah I it's larger brakes usually translate to better stopping better power. stopping power which means you typically aren't pushing them as hard but it's it's tough to say you know I don't know like you said I don't know if this will translate to better brake cooling I mean they are slotted rotors and there's more surface area so maybe they throw off heat better I mean it, there's some arguments to be made that it probably is better than a stock setup but again you know we're pretty racing heavy but racing is a very small part of the market for the guy out there trail riding this is totally unnecessary yeah uh Normally, the reason in, in any car or anything that you do a brake upgrade is you need more braking. Like, the machine's weight can't be stopped fast enough. Yeah. Every UTV I have ever been in, as long as you haven't cooked the brakes, um, you can lock all four tires up at will. Yeah. In fact, with the, the width of the tires and the relative light weight of the machine, really the, the thing that's limiting you is just, you know, how much traction you have on the tires it's not the brakes themselves yeah and if you're and, that's and if you're out in the mud for, or ice or something like that i mean if you're racing cross country and it's slick out that doesn't matter at all you have no traction right, right. i i applaud that someone is doing something different i wonder how much is it needed the only spot i can think where it would really be well that i can think of that would be needed is those few people that are putting like street tires on and running a rallycross style race. Yeah. Well, and that's not very many. And you had noted that the Can Ams do boil their brake fluid, but this was specifically for Razor applications. And honestly, I'm just not seeing that out there. No. Not on the Razors. No, not at all. So I don't know. I I don't. It, I don't get it. Like you said, I, I'm all about innovation. I I'm agree with you. I just I don't know if they're gonna see a huge return on the investment here. This is all speculation, and this is not really along the lines of the big brake kit that we're talking about, but I wonder if the Can-Ams boil the brake fluid more, because if I remember right, their reservoirs are in behind the firewall under a cover, Oh. whereas the razors are up in front of the firewall in the open wind, like under the driver's side headlight, basically. That could have a lot to do with it. I wonder. I mean, it, it really has nothing to do with it, and you know, it, but it's just how my mind works. I'm like, I wonder, because... That is two vastly different placements, and the Razors does get wind movement over it as the machine's going. I think the Can-Am guys are going to tell you that A, their machines are faster, and B, Razor drivers are <laughs> sissies, and that's why. Because <laughs> Razor drivers don't have to use those brakes. The Can-Am drivers are a bunch of foot draggers. I don't know, but there's... <laughs> It definitely seems to happen more, and you do kind of wonder if it's if it's a placement issue or something along those lines, or maybe yeah. they, maybe the brake setup on the Can Ams just happens to drag more, so there's just more latent heat there than the Razor application. You know, you'd have to do some scientific testing to know that for sure. Oh, okay, but 
It's all pure speculation. Yeah, but good for them for doing something. Not sure how big of a market they have, but whatever. It's a really impressive looking kit, though. Um, if you Factory Elite posted on their Facebook page, so if you just look for a Factory Elite, uh, you'll see the the post. But man, all the parts on it from the pictures look absolutely top notch. Yeah, definitely impressive stuff. Agreed. So, and they're not doing and... it for the KNM yet, but they, you know, there's questions down in the comments about that. So I'm really curious if they develop one for the KNM and if that translates into making the problem better or worse. Who knows? Eh, who knows? So, so the other so... thing that we predicted and has come to pass really quickly, there is now a 2020 Polaris Razor Pro XP4. Yeah. I figured it was going to happen. I didn't even figure it was going to happen this quick, though. No. They, I mean, the Pro XP, the announcement for that was six months ago? That, yeah, August-ish, September, something like that. Yeah, so I was kind of surprised that they are doing it this quickly, but the specs are kind of what you thought they would be. Uh, 180 horsepower, um, 125-inch wheelbase. So this thing is a bus <laughs> yeah but what's the x3 max i think it's longer still yeah so it's uh it's also uh thirty thousand dollars <laughs> yeah the prices just keep climbing on these things i'm telling you i crazy i think for thirty thousand dollars i could build a pretty nice truck <laughs> uh, i mean for what these do yeah like the the they're a bargain for what they actually can do. And I know it's crazy to say that, but we're talking... I mean, okay, think think about it this way, Doug. Think back 10 years to trophy trucks. I don't know how much you followed them back 10 years ago or even 15 years ago. They're it nothing was like unheard of. <laughs> it was unheard of that they even had, you know, 18 inches of travel. Yeah. Now these things are coming out of the factory with 20-something inches of travel. It's true. It's just a mind-boggling amount of money. <laughs> it is. It's a lot. But when you're talking about trophy trucks of 10 years ago, they were spending, you know, a quarter to a half a million dollars on them. It's true. To get the same or less performance. Now, there is more, um, more horsepower to them, but you can get more horsepower out of these, too. It's true. I mean, it, we're going to start seeing stuff that coming out that's going to be, you know... 350 horsepower by the time you fully build it, and that's going to be pretty impressive. I think it was Wayland Speed built a X3 on a stock block that touched 500 horse. That's amazing. I'm just reading this line. So I'm on utvdriver.com. Um, they're a really solid site. They do good reviews, and I, I like reading their stuff. Uh, but this line says, if you're looking for a way to melt your friend's minds, then click play on the video below and prepare to spend another thirty grand because you have little or no self-control when it comes to buying new toys. <laughs> uh, some people like the four-seaters. I don't know that it would ever be my my top choice. Well, they're heavier, and then you add the weight of passengers, and so it's instantly not as capable as its two-seater cousin. So while you're saying... Right. You get a lot for the money, and you do. You can't drive one of these fully loaded as hard as you can a two-seater. You just can't. <laughs> no. I mean, there's just no two ways about that. But um, one thing that is kind of neat about this, the rear seats fold down, and they create a 16-cubic-foot cargo area back there. Yeah, they make like a tray or something yeah. similar. So that's kind of neat. So if your passengers get annoying, you can ditch them and put a bunch of beer coolers back there and just have a really big two-seater. Well, and that's what some people do with their four-seaters is there's been guys in the past that just completely take the seats out, and they just put coolers back there. Yeah. So that's, so. Uh, I mean, it's it's a sharp-looking machine. Um, I mean, if you haven't seen a picture of it yet, it looks exactly like what you're picturing in your head. Take a Pro XP, make stretch it, it out stretch a little it bit. Out. Um, it's got the same kind of abrupt back end to it. Um, I mean, honestly, it's a really good-looking machine. But other than that, it's just it's what you're expecting. If you have read all the specs and been drooling over the Pro XP, uh, this is 
the next logical evolution of it. So yep. we knew it was coming. Didn't think it was going to be this quick, which means they basically had them done at the exact same time. They were just waiting to release this one, is my read on yep. it. They developed them probably side by side. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. That's I'm pretty sure that's probably what they did. So uh, It does make you wonder what the future holds for UTVs, though. I mean, are they going to keep climbing horsepower? You know... What what's the next crazy thing that's going to happen? I'm not looking for answers. I'm just yeah. I we've kind of talked about this in the past, and honestly, UTVs. No offense to any of the drivers out there, but the top end UTVs are already more capable than ninety percent of the people who buy them. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, I'm not trying to dog on anybody, but the reality is, is even in the race circles we see people racing these things that can't even take full advantage because they just don't have the skill level. I mean, it's hard to drive something to the ragged edge and do it well and do it consistently. So we've already, the you know, an 800, pretty much anybody can drive a Razor 800 to the ragged edge. There's not a whole lot there. I mean, they go 55 flat out. The suspension travel will let you know that you've overdone it long before you've <laughs> overdone it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but now when you're talking 200 horse machines with 24 inches of wheel travel and just all the things that you can get box stock, I mean, these aren't upgrades. You're just going and swiping the credit card or whatever you're doing. It's just out of reach of most people to make use of all that. So adding more power, adding more suspension travel, it doesn't buy anybody that is using one of these. It, it doesn't get them anything. I mean, right. yeah. you can argue about the race applications of it and those kind of things, but I, we've kind of hit that pinnacle of there's new technologies. I'm not saying that the, the market is done. There's nothing new that they can come out with, but I think we've definitely hit that plateau where there'll be small incremental changes and some people will really want to do things just because they can do them. But I mean... I, like I said, I've seen people drive these things. I've seen how they're treated. I've seen how they're used. Nobody's getting the performance out of them that they're capable of because it, it just takes time and skill and dedication. If you're a top-tier driver, you're putting a ton of practice in. You're not just right. showing up on race day and racing and packing it up, going home, washing it, and put it in the garage, and waiting for two weeks. Right. I mean, you're putting hours and hours and hours in behind the wheel on a daily basis, and that's what it takes to be at the top. So... Unless you're willing to do that, you're just, you know what? It doesn't matter which top end machine you buy, you can't take advantage of it. Yeah. So, speaking of top end racers, uh, Texplex had their first race of the year. Yes, this they year, did. This weekend. Yep. Kyle so, Hart coming up big in that one, too. There were several local guys from around here and who raced in the AXCC races who went down there to try their hand at it. Yeah. It's, um, it was good to see. It was good to see, you know, we'll call local guys or regional guys going down there and saying, you know what, we're just going to throw it out there. Yeah. Um, who was it? Mitch Langford went down there. Um, I felt bad because I found out after the fact that as soon as, basically, as soon as he got down there, he got hit by the flu and uh, he's been throwing up ever since he hit Texas, basically. Uh, he finished in 21st. <laughs> Yeah. That's rough, though. Well, that is really bad. I mean, he was super excited about it, obviously, and then to take all the time and effort to get down there and then have that hit you. I mean, well, you were going to race Iron Man and yeah. kidney stones. Kidney I mean, stone. seriously, who predicts that? <laughs> right. Like, I was loaded and driving to the track. Yeah. I mean. it's It's amazing how often that stuff coincides and honestly i think part of it is just the stress of the excitement i mean it sounds weird to say it that way but it does stress your body out when you're really looking forward to something and i think sometimes we just kind of break down more than we intend to <laughs> oh I, I i'm sure you're right uh i'm sure that that happens and when you're uh well in racing itself people think the people who have never done any racing think that oh you know you just strap into the vehicle and you go race um, and it takes no athletic ability or anything like that. It's You can race with no athletic ability. You can't race well with no athletic ability. No. 
You look at Kyle Chaney and the shape he's in, that's not an accident. You look at uh, Corey Weller, I mean, she's a, kind of a workout fanatic, but she's also at the top of her race game, and the two go hand in hand. Right. You know, there's that, reasons. There is natural ability, too, also like, like any sport, baseball, football, whatever. Some of these guys are naturally gifted at racing or baseball or football or whatever, but you're not going to be that 400-pound guy, go out there and be the baddest racer ever no i mean you don't in nascar at times you've seen some of the drivers get a little heavier but their performance tends to fall off when that happens yeah you know they're not top of their game anymore exactly so and honestly no, not that the, i'm not you know i don't want to get into which is harder but nascar requires an incredible amount of focus because you are at those speeds, you're at the limit of the grip of the machine the entire time. It's like driving on ice. If you make one screw up, you're in the wall. But yeah. if you're talking XC racing, it's just more physically punishing. You're not jumping off of things and going over berms and doing crazy crap in NASCAR. I mean, it's hard, don't get me wrong, but you watch GoPro videos of people XC racing and you are banging around in that machine. I mean, your head's well, flailing around. It's just, it's tough. Well, in the uh, if you guys go, well, it would have been what about five days ago from when this is released. Uh, we put out a basically 2019 year in review for Eminent Performance, like the events we'd gone to, some of the videos we made, just cut a bunch of things up, some things that you know we found funny and stuff like that. But in right about in the middle of that, it was what I'm gonna call like my best shot. I just happened to be at the right place at the right time. I was in uh, was it Kentucky at an AXCC race, and it was on the start line, and a black Can-Am X3, it's an S3 buggy, I don't remember who it was, but he's coming in, and he gets hit, like, right in the side by a Razor, and you can watch both driver and passenger's heads whip from the, like, side impact, and straighten up, and then they start to take off, and they actually get bumped a second time, and their heads whip again. Yeah. Um. It's physically abusive on your body. It's not uncommon where if it's a rougher than normal race where the driver and passenger will be sore for several days, like not just their neck, but all over sore. Oh, yeah. Yep. Just from getting beat up. So the uh, when I raced out at Casey with Matt Rowell, there was this one section of the track that was so punishing. Every time we got to it, I grabbed my harness and I pulled down as hard as I could. And I just, it was just grin and bear it because it was, it hurt so bad. Yeah. It felt like you were just getting rapid fire punched in the kidneys. <laughs> yeah. And there's just nothing you can do about it. Nope. And these are not like, you know, ill prepared cars. The best of the best suspension just can't take it because you're going so fast. Like we said, the performance of the machines. And then the roughness of the XC style racing that you can't tune for everything if it was just those like you know nasty chop section like what you're talking about you can tune suspension for that but you also have to tune it for big jumps where at that same race Steve Mueller was airing out his buggy and he was at his peak 20 feet above the ground something like that I mean, yes that was awesome some ridiculous amount and landing down on the other side uh, and the suspension has to be able to take that and just the fast corners I mean you just can't tune for all scenarios you kind of pick the middle road of what you're going to do and hope it works yeah you tune what's going to be the best for your driving style and it will not be perfect everywhere on the track it just is what right. it is so but yeah we've but got now, uh, definitely Texplex. there's definitely some big names that uh, showed up down there but a lot of local people as well and a really good turnout honestly I wish uh, wish I had the time to get down there yeah I would have liked to have gone there several guys that went down there uh, local even like I said Mitch Langford was down there and Colin Cornelius went and poor Colin he got bit by uh, a big tabletop I think it was but several people got bit by that tabletop I think Hunter Miller got bit it by that one too and just went a little too fast over it and actually landed into the upslope of the next jump or the next hill yeah and colin folded up the front end i think he blew a ball joint out is what it looks like um hunter miller bent something but was able to continue the race 
Yeah, he uh, he was uh, first in Heat 1, and then Moto 1 he was first, and then Moto 2 he was fifth, and that's the one where he messed the front end up a little bit but was able to finish. It's still good enough for a third place, but he was running super strong, and if it wasn't for that, you know, could have been contending for the top spot. Yeah. So, and Texplex, I mean... I'm conflicted. They call it XC Racing down there in Texas. The elevation change is all done by bulldozers, and I don't think there's a tree over 15 feet on the property. No, they don't really have what we consider XC Racing here. It's definitely, it's almost like a XC uh, short, short course, course hybrid. Mix. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it, even their uh, their wood sections are wide enough you can drive a truck down through there without thinking twice about it it's just which to me looks kind of awesome but <laughs> it does look neat the the only thing is it's not really xc racing to me i mean it's no it's not it's not what i think of xc racing i mean i'm glad there is that style and i wouldn't mind trying it even so i'm not saying it's bad i'm just saying i don't it doesn't feel like xc racing yeah i can see that so Yep, all kinds of all kinds of guys showed up there, and I think they had a good turnout there uh, because it's in Texas, which it's a little warmer there, obviously, and it's off season of all the other racing that everybody, pretty much all these other guys do, so it gave them a place to go. Exactly. Yep. So something to do, and I mean, honestly. It hasn't been that long since the end of racing season, but people are already starting to have cabin fever. Yeah. You know, it's an excuse to get out and do something. Yep. So Wagglers, uh, speaking of short course, they did officially announce their short course series for this year. They're going to have five rounds. Yes, they That's did. They're trying to work out another date, but it's they're also trying to be super considerate about not stepping on top of AXCC or any of the locals. And honestly, that's almost impossible because there's so much racing going on. But yes, they're doing their best to steer clear. Plus, they're busy. I mean, they have other racing going on, so they also have to work around their own schedule. Right. I plan on running that. Um, there is a big break in there from May to October is no race for them that is a really super long break <laughs> yeah so whatever i think I part mean, of it I, was basically june and july they're booked up like they got nothing available right so yeah i, I understand it i'm not saying it's you know but, but i would just like to see a couple more but it's their first year so well and i think it opens up an interesting opportunity if they can partner with one of the other race series that does xc racing that maybe wants to dip their toe into short course they have connections they know landowners maybe they can put together a short course uh you know one or two events themselves and then do a kind of a co-sanctioned thing where you can now have seven to eight races but wagglers doesn't have to host every single one of them right so the the scheduling isn't so bad yeah so i think there's an interesting opportunity opportunity there for an enterprising local race series to maybe dip their toe into something a little bit different besides just xc yeah and even like uh parsons uh what do they call it motorplex or compound parsons compound Uh, compound yeah that's what it is um they have a, I'm not going to call it short course, but it's an MX style. They would need to sculpt some of the jumps a little better for UTVs. Mm-hmm. But they have a big enough place there where they can do that. They could be a quote-unquote short course style race location. Yeah. With so, with fairly minimal effort. Yeah, like if you went in there with a day with a skid loader and just kind of reface some of the jumps a little bit different, it would be fine. Yeah. So there's so. plenty of opportunity out there, and I think the even I mean it's obviously a little late in the year now to start talking about trying to create other people to partner with and that kind of stuff. But I think if Wagglers has a strong showing this year, I think that will happen next year. I think somebody's going to jump on that ball and you know partner with them and, and help spread things out a little bit. Yeah, it might be eminent performance. Who knows? Maybe. <laughs> So, Doug, believe it or not, we've already been talking for 40 minutes. It, it's totally believable. Yeah. Dude, you, so you and I can kill an hour on the phone like nobody's business. Yes. 
So, because it's been 40 minutes, you know what time it is. It is time for trivial things. Yes. You haven't done trivia in a while, have you? Uh, not since last time when I totally killed it. Yeah, you actually, oh yeah, you did do pretty good on that one, I didn't did you? I did really good last time. I don't remember how many you got, but it was I think it was like good. five or maybe uh, yeah. six or something like that, but compared to my near, like normal point two one. average. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty good. Hey, not bad at all. So are you ready for your trivia, sir? More or less. All right, question number one. The first time Ronald Reagan voted for a U.S. president, who did he cast his ballot for? Himself. <laughs> Is that your answer? Yes. You are wrong. Aw. FDR. Oh, okay. Wow. So, yeah. So he was old. Yeah? Yeah? That works out, because he served in World War Two. Well, yes and no. He basically made... Uh, training videos in, yeah. in World War II, so he would have been at the age. The reason I said that, I thought maybe he was one of these people that never voted, but oh, yeah. up until you're elected, you're just a citizen. You can vote. Right. You can vote for yourself. Yep. So. All right. Question number two. What are the four main ingredients of concrete? Uh, water, lime, some sort of aggregate, and uh, some other bit. <laughs> I guess we can give you half an imaginary internet point for that. <laughs> sand, water, cement, and gravel. Okay, sand, yeah. I was kind of mixing that in my head like the aggregate. Like, usually you don't, you know, when I see it, it's all one pile kind of premixed, but. Yeah, but they are separate. Yes, yes, they are. So. All right. Question number three. In the 1990s, what was the name of, of Operation Desert Storm known as before it escalated to its full-fledged siege? As Operation Desert Shield, I believe. You are correct. That was a big deal. Remember that? When they announced yes. in school that, like, we're going to war? Yep. That was that was a big deal. And now everyone thinks Trump started World War Three. Oh, well, Lord. not everyone, but... Yes, all of a sudden taking out a horrible Iranian dictator is like a bad thing. Okay, whatever. Anyways. Uh, well, welcome to our modern world where everything is bad because it wasn't you who did it and it wasn't your par political party who chose to do it. And and why is nobody pissed off that Obama started seven discretionary wars after winning his Nobel Peace Prize? Yeah, like, whatever. Nobody cares about that, but whatever. Yeah. All right, next question. What large U.S. city calls its newspaper The Bee? Hmm. I don't know. I feel like I'm going to... It's going to make sense after you tell me. Um, man. What's the state... Uh, okay, what's the... It's you do, 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 do. It's gonna be somewhere in Utah. No. Nope. Okay. Then I'm I'm totally off track. Uh, I've got no idea then. <laughs> okay, Sacramento. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I was thinking didn't, we had a trivia question about some state that like their things a beehive or something like that. Like yeah, they, I don't remember what it was. I want to I want to say it was Utah, so that kind of got me down that track. Yeah, but well, nope, not it. So, it, any any reason why, or did you not look that up? Nah, too too much extra effort there. <laughs> That's for me to find out. Gotcha. Yeah. All right, next one. Which TV production company bought the uh, Late Show with David Letterman, or brought it to NBC? Sorry, not bought. Brought the Late Show with David Letterman to NBC. So, oh, so. It was a production company that had this idea or pilot shows or whatever they had of Late Night with David Letterman, and they brought it to NBC. What is the name of that production company? And just so you know, it's they still are part of it. They didn't like sell off all their rights. Their name is still on the end of every one of them. I thought he was on CBS. Because uh, is, is it NBC's The Tonight Show? Or the... Uh... Not the David Letterman, <clears throat> pardon me. 
at the Jay Leno show. To, I don't it, know, maybe they brought it to NBC first. NBC passed on it. Anyways, I maybe. think it's Worldwide yeah. Pants. You are correct. <laughs> it is Worldwide Pants. <laughs> I always liked Letterman better, so that if I watched a late show, it was that one. See, here's my weird take on this, and maybe uh, I'm weird, okay, whatever. So, I liked Letterman's show, but outside of the show, I liked Jay Leno better. Yeah, because he's a huge, huge car nerd, and he's, you know, just kind of an interesting guy. But, yeah, Letterman, had he knew how to handle a crowd, and he just kind of had that really dry delivery that he could pull it off. Right. I think I liked Leno because he was a car guy, and he's he was very down to earth and relatable, even though he's like this multimillionaire. Yeah, as so. as relatable as somebody with a garage like that can be. Yes, <laughs> I, I strive to be him. <laughs> I th- I honestly think he's one of these multimillionaires who, you know, this is pure speculation because I never met the guy, but he seems like he's a more down to earth guy, like you said. Like you could actually hold a conversation with him. Everybody who I've ever talk to that has ever met him or done an interview they all say the same thing yeah like yes you'd know he's rich because he has a lot of cars and stuff like that but to just talk to him it money is not his concern fame is not his concern yeah that's just not his thing i think it'd be really hard to hold down a conversation with bill gates like if you just sat down across the table from him <laughs> <laughs> yeah see i i kind of think uh Leno is probably similar to like Travis Pastrana, but not quite as crazy. Yeah. Because Travis Pastrana is very down to earth. Like I've got to sit and talk with him. You would never know that he is someone who's like famous at all. Yeah. Just super down to earth guy, kind of big goofy guy and, you know, funny and whatnot. But until you put him on a motorized vehicle and that all goes out the window. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> so we have gotten far distracted from trivia yes moving on now okay next one what is the name of batman's butler um alfred yes very good i figured you'd get that one i hope so i didn't know if you'd get worldwide pants but i thought there stood to be a chance there. that is one you have to know you're not going to guess it because that is not a normal production company name <laughs> yes <laughs> All right, next question. What is it called when the liquid vapor pressure equals the equals to the pressure of the gas above it? Um Is this a very technical term or is this one that like I should just know? I'm not telling you anything on this one. I'll repeat the question though. <laughs> What is it called when the liquid vapor pressure equals to the pressure of the gas above it? The boiling point? <laughs> um, you are correct. <laughs> I hate you so it much. It is the boiling point. <laughs> There's a ter- What was tripping me up is there is a term for when something goes directly from a solid to a gas, like dry ice. Yeah. When it boils, it turns directly into a gas. It doesn't go to a liquid state first. And that's what I thought maybe you were going for. I'm like, nah, I'm just going to say boiling point. (laughs) There you go. Classic classic Doug overthinking things. Yep, you almost did it, didn't you? I almost did. That's where I always screw myself on this is I overthink it, and I should have taken the obvious answer. All right, next question. What object marks the geographic South Pole? Um... I don't know, so I'm guessing there's just a... Uh, I don't know, like a, not a plaque, but like a pin or something like that. Well, it was a plaque, so you were oh, wrong. Damn. You said not a plaque. <laughs> it is a plaque. Okay, there I said plaque. plaque. I'm taking it. <laughs> no, you said not a plaque. <laughs> you very clearly said not a plaque. Okay, fine. All right, next question. What is the technical term for the voice box found in mammals? Um, so I'm guessing it's not vocal cords. Uh, well, it's what is the technical term for the voice box found in mammals? Um, 
Larynx? Yes. Man, you're doing pretty good today. I had to reach for that one a little bit. <laughs> had to dig in the way back, huh? I did. That that my brain is now liquid, so I'm probably gonna miss this next one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, you might get it. Okay, last one. Who did Charles Barkley name as the one player I'd accept losing to if I have to lose? Himself? <laughs> <laughs> no it is michael jordan dude come on i was gonna say michael jordan <laughs> too bad you were too slow okay i want well. that I'm one because i knew off. the answer michael jordan okay okay <laughs> nobody's a bigger fan of charles barkley than charles barkley than charles but... barkley <laughs> i mean yeah it, it's it's kind of hard to argue with michael jordan's skill on the court i mean yeah well, except for LeBron. I mean, he'll argue with it all day long. Yeah, that's one of those ones where it's really tough. You can never compare them in their prime, so argue all you want. I mean, LeBron's a bigger physical presence, so there's certain situations he's going to be better at because he can basically, kind of like Shaquille O'Neal, just bully people out of the way. Um, Michael Jordan was all finesse. I mean, yep. there was some physical play there because he, he wasn't small. He was six foot six, but... Very small by NBA standards. But, you know, he he just had that finesse. He could just do things that looked fake because he had that finesse. And LeBron James is a little bit more, of, to me, just a brawler. I mean, not that he's not a good player, not that he's not physically gifted, but, you know, he's a much heavier framed individual and he can just kind of bully people out of the way. My biggest thing with LeBron, or between LeBron and Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan knew he was good, but he didn't go around telling everyone he was the greatest. LeBron loves... LeBron is another one. LeBron's biggest fan is LeBron. Yeah. Uh, Michael Jordan definitely had an ego, but he was willing to... He wanted to work hard enough that other people said it instead of him. Right. You know? I, hey, that's fine with me, but when... You give yourself the name, the king, and all the things LeBron goes around and says. Yeah. Nah. Your your ego has inflated far beyond what I care to deal with. You can go on and live in your own imaginary world. Yeah. Yeah, I always appreciated the understated players that would just... Uh, they just played the game, and maybe they weren't the greatest of all time, but you couldn't argue with their skill, but they never promoted themselves. Like David Robinson... Yeah, incredibly skilled player, but man, he just seemed like about the humblest guy in the world too. Larry Bird, I mean, he wasn't as humble, but I mean, great ball player. Yeah. And... Let other people say it about you. If you're that good, other people will say it. Yep. And if you're not, then maybe you need to be better. Yeah. Nuggets of wisdom. Well, we've come to that point in the show where we're going to close it before we stick our foot in our mouth anymore, unless you have a stupid yeah, stuff with Chad. That a lot. Other than, like, <laughs> I think this whole, we're just going to get tons of mileage out of this exchange, student. I know that. Oh, already. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you'll you'll like this. This is kind of not really with Chad, but because a foreign exchange student is with me, whatever. So we're just getting out of church today, and my wife gets a phone call, and it's from Paris. And she's like, oh, no, you know, because that's where this kid is from. Yeah. And um, she picks up the phone, and it's this kid's mom. Apparently, he hadn't called or texted his mom since he got in the country. It's really good to know that no matter where a 16-year-old kid is from, they behave They're exactly all the same. The same. <laughs> I thought the exact same thing. I'm like, well, a French teenager is no different than the American ones. My kid would have been getting yelled at by my wife for not texting or calling. Yeah, exactly. I was like, the, so, it was like last night. Deacon, who we try not to be overprotective, but he is a diabetic. So when it gets late at night, you kind of want to know, hey, are you heading home? Like, just shoot us a text so that if you're not home in a certain time frame, we know you didn't like pass out from a diabetic low while you were driving. You know, it's just it's try as you might to treat him exactly like a normal teenager. There is a level of caution we have to exercise you just right there's no way around it so it's like the other night it's getting on 10 o'clock and i shoot him a text i'm like you planning on coming home at some point because his curfew is 11 right now okay and he's like yeah i'm gonna head out in a few minutes and it's like okay just checking you know like he <laughs> yeah jeez well but this kid 
had been in the country for yeah. I mean, he flew uh, for like twelve hours or something, and yeah, yeah. he's five thousand miles away from home right now. Yeah, and his mom had been like texting him and stuff, and I guess he just never saw the messages or whatever. That's hilarious. But yeah. we're we're all this, you know. If my world travels have taught me anything, it's that we're not near as different as we think we are. No, it, no. You know, there's we have different ways of doing things, but man, I've been literally all over the world at this point, and people are people, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Teenagers are teenagers. Teenagers are teenagers. So I've got one extra one who I don't know how to speak his language. And I'm just relying on that the stuff they taught him in school is enough for him to understand me. I'm sure there's going to be some hilarious mistranslations, and I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah. (laughs) See how this goes, right? Better you than me. Yeah. It's an adventure. I'm I'm always up for an adventure. You know that. True story. Well, before we forget, we do want to say a thank you to all of our sponsors. Of course, CW Motorsports, who has been the title sponsor for 2019. And now that we're into 2020, we haven't really discussed that. Actually, we kind of blew that. We should have been talking about that back in November. Yeah, we did. We just kind of let it go and kept pushing it back and whatever. So if you guys are interested in becoming a sponsor of the show, hit us up. Um, there are a couple more who we need to get into some real talks with because they expressed interest and said, let us know when the time comes and we're on board. But the time is now. Now. Yes. <laughs> now, now. We'll give you extra kudos to make up for the time between now and when you come on board and we, you know, missed multiple weeks or something. We'll figure that out. Yeah. We'll mention so you before and after or something. <laughs> yeah. Get with us if you're interested in becoming a show sponsor doesn't have to be straight money like we've said every year um you know we'll find a, we will find a way to get we'll our find a way. flesh out of you yep <laughs> but anyways for the time being we're still going to say thank you to cw motorsports also let's mix this up a little bit next we're going to go tgm off-road again great group of guys and gals if you need utv community because honestly that is probably the best part about the utv lifestyle is the people you'll meet get in with them. If you haven't found a group, a local one or a regional one, you just want people to talk to, get in with TGM Off-Road. Great group of people over there. Yep. Uh, of course, uh, Spangs Fab, who is making fantastic UTV parts. And I mean, if you need a full race cage, they will hook you up with that. If you need beefy control arms, if you need a front bumper, rear bumper, whatever you need, they can make it for you. And uh, he's constantly expanding his lineup, coming up with new things. And I know a few months ago he was looking for additional welders, which means that he's putting out more parts. So definitely get a hold of Spangs Fab for any of your UTV parts needs. And yep. Watch Communication, who has been faithfully hosting this show since September of 2017. Wow. That seems amazing, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> that they have not kicked us off yet. <laughs> Don't. Don't bring it to their attention. They don't know. That's clearly what it is. They just don't know. I get an email every month that says, hey, you've got a hosting bill due, and it's $0. Yay. (laughs) I will gladly pay that. I like those emails. But seriously, Watch Communications, you have been an outstanding partner. We really, really appreciate everything you've done for us. If you need your own hosting, you can do so by going to watchcom with two ms.net and putting in the code waste of time when you check out. That will get you one month of free hosting for whatever type of web page you're doing. Or if you live in rural parts of Illinois, Ohio, or Indiana, they can probably hook you up with internet service if the big bad cable company hasn't made it out there already and you don't have any good options. They definitely are constantly expanding their lineup uh they're even getting into some you know the they're talking about the 4g and five or all the 5g stuff now they're actually getting into that where they don't have to do line of sight like you don't have to have the tower on your house pointed at a direction they could just get you internet Uh, so yeah they're they're moving their uh their internet game up rapidly uh, you can find us on the web at eminentperformance.com, and there's links there to all the other places you can find us, like Facebook slash Eminent Racing, Instagram slash Eminent Racing. You can find us on YouTube uh, at Eminent Performance, just youtube.com slash Eminent Performance, actually. And that's where you'll find the video version of this show. If you're looking for the audio-only version, pretty much any place you normally would get a podcast, like iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Podcast Addict, 
they all kind of draw from the same database, so I found us in places that we have not even subscribed to in our podcast is being published there. So should be pretty easy to find. But if you are out there on the wild woolly interwebs, make sure that you on iTunes leave us a review. If you're on uh, the Google Play side of things, leave us a like. All that stuff helps. It lets uh, them know that people are interested in the podcast and therefore it recommends us to other people who have been fortunate enough to not find it yet and maybe we can affect their brains as well. If you're watching on YouTube right now, make sure that you click the little subscribe button down there in the lower was it lower right hand corner as you're looking at the screen. And yep. once you click subscribe, which notifies you about all of our updates, there's a little bell icon you can click on and that will actually give you an active alert when we post new content. Like Chad's famous 2019 year in review video. Yeah. Which go take a look at that. It's just fun. It's about eight and a half, nine minutes, something like that, of just, it, like I was telling Doug, it is amazing to look back and think that, that we did all of that in 2019. It's been an incredible year in a lot of fronts, that's for sure. And there was way more that I edited out. I just, you know, I didn't want to have a 30-minute long video there, so I just took clips of things that were kind of the highlights for us and, you know, the exciting shots and stuff like that. Who wants to listen it's, to us for an hour? <laughs> Yeah, really, there's none of the <laughs> podcast talking in there. I mean, no. not anything you can hear. It's just super fast forwarded, just of like you know to remind people that we do it. But yeah, it's amazing all the things that we got to go do in 2019, and it looks like 2020 is going to be every bit as much. So, and there was some significant interest in another round of uh, Sunday Drive. So. Yep. We're in discussions about how to put that together and what the 2020 season is going to look like. So you have spoken, and I think at this point we are going to do it again. Yep, there is that, and I think we're going to have to do the women's drivers thing. Absolutely. We've had, we have also had several people, and we'll try and wrap this up here. But we've had several people say that both of our wives need to be on the podcast. <laughs> we could make that happen. That could be an interesting yep. show. Yep. So I think we're going to have to set that up here pretty quick, and we'll do that. Yeah, I think um, Brandy, incidentally, has been in the podcast in the background and that kind of stuff, but I don't think anybody has gotten with, like, hiding her hair of Jenny, so. Yeah, I don't think so. That'd be a total shock. Yeah. Well, I think that'd be a good one, and we'll we'll have them talk about all the, the craziness the behind the scenes that most people don't see stuff like that you know it could be fun let's let's try and make this happen we should all meet somewhere for dinner and film it like if we can get a, a a restaurant that has kind of like a side room there'll still be background noise and stuff but i think we could do it uh it'd be kind of an interesting way to do that okay we, 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 we could con the wives into going out to dinner with us and then you know shove a webcam in their face yep sounds good to me all right, and no matter what kind of human trafficking you've been involved with, thanks for riding along with us. Thanks, guys. Deep.